Before we get started tonight, please join me in an open prayer. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your wisdom, love, caring, and understanding in these perilous times. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for our increased courage and faith. We thank you for your understanding above all. We thank you, Father Yahuwah, for allowing us to become better than who and what we were the day before and to help others to do the same. We thank you, Father Yahuwah, for allowing us to be here right now to witness your prophecies come to fruition. We thank you for your word because we know it will never return void. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for covering and keeping us through all manner of sin and evil, both seen and unseen. We thank you. We thank you for our guardian angels who watch over us, protect us, teach us, and keep us in isolation, protecting us from all manner of sin, evil, witchcraft, plots, plans, and agreements to our detriment. We thank you, Father Yahuwah, for keeping us in your will and giving us a purpose and a destiny to fulfill. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for delivering us so that we can appreciate you for who you are and not what you can grant us. May our words spoken and our actions be nothing but upliftment to your name. Father Yahuwah, may our words spoken and our actions be nothing but upliftment to your name, Father Yahuwah and upliftment to your word. May we be a guiding light, a beacon on top of a hill, shining so bright that all may see and glorify our Father Yahuwah, which art in heaven. Thank you, Father Yahuwah. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Yahusha. The book, When Called by God, a memoir that chronicles my journey from three to 51 years old is available in hardcover, paperback, digital, and audiobook worldwide through online retailers Amazon, Google, Books A Million, and many others. You can pick up these titles in print by visiting uslmag.com. That's U-S-L-M-A-G.com. Get a copy of the digital version visiting magster.com. That's M-A-G-Z-T-E-R dot com. Or just Google the title, When Called by God, inspired by USL Magazine. When Called by God, the copy table book with select chapters from the memoir is also available in print. Order online at uslmag.com or magcloud.com. That's U-S-L-M-A-G dot com or M-A-G-C-L-O-U-D dot com. The When Called by God book tour is sponsored by Inspire by USL Magazine. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first night of our virtual book tour for When Called by God, a memoir that chronicles my journey from three to 51 years old. I'm the author, Patrick Andrew Kelly, and we're thrilled to have you join us as we embark on this powerful journey of faith, transformation, and divine purpose. Tonight, we'll dive into three pivotal excerpts from the memoir, each offering a unique window into the extraordinary life and story and the most profound spiritual truths I've been called to share. Our readings will take you from the moment of my divine calling through my battles with personal demons to my awakening to a greater destiny, not just for myself, but for all of God's chosen people. These selections encapsulate the heart of the message, one of hope, redemption, and the incredible power of surrendering to God's will. As we listen to these passages, I invite you to open your hearts and minds to the transformative power of these words. Whether you're here seeking inspiration, grappling with challenges, 
or simply curious about one man's remarkable journey with God, you'll find something that speaks directly to your soul. After our readings, we'll have time for reflection and discussion via our corresponding email, wcbymemoir at gmail.com. That's wcbymemoir, M-E-M-O-I-R, at gmail.com. So please feel free to share your thoughts or ask questions. Remember, this is the beginning of our journey together through this powerful memoir. I have an offer for you all, and I want to say a little about it now so that it can begin to churn, take root, and blossom into something captivating and awe-inspiring. So here it is. The most captivating moments of the Q&A with the author section will receive a full page feature in the upcoming quarter one 2025 issue titled a bold new world where one life-changing independent author will receive the coveted cover of issue two of inspired by usl magazine titled why am i here so without further ado let's begin chapter one titled the message we begin our journey with a pivotal moment in my life, a divine encounter that would forever change my course. In this excerpt from chapter one, we'll hear about the profound dream that awakened me to my true calling and purpose. This moment is the foundation for the entire book, setting the stage for my transformation and the message I've been entrusted to share. This is the book's central theme. To my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, words cannot express my gratitude for your unwavering love, grace, and faithfulness. You have been my rock, redeemer, and constant companion on this journey of discovery and purpose. I am in awe of how you had orchestrated every step of my path, molding and shaping me from when I was three years old to this very moment. Through every trial, triumph, valley, and mountaintop, you have guided, strengthened, and revealed your perfect plan for my life. This book is a testament to your goodness and your power, a reflection of the incredible work that you have done in and through me. It is an offering of praise and thanksgiving, a declaration of your sovereignty and love. I dedicate this work to you, Jesus, my Savior, King, and Friend. May every word on these pages bring glory and honor to your name, and may every life touched by this message be transformed by the power of your amazing grace. Thank you for calling, equipping, and entrusting me with this sacred task. Thank you for the privilege of being a vessel for your truth and love, and for the opportunity to share the revelations and insights that you have imparted to me. I am forever grateful for the way you have redeemed my story and given me a new purpose and identity in you. I am humbled by how you have taken the broken pieces of my life and fashioned them into a beautiful mosaic, that reflects your artistry and grace. As this book goes forth into the world, it will be a catalyst for revival and awakening, a spark that ignites the hearts of men and women everywhere to seek you and to find their true destiny in you. I pray that every person who reads these words will encounter you freshly and powerfully, and that the revelation of your love and your truth will forever change their lives. Thank you, Jesus, for the honor of being called by you and for the joy of serving you all the days of my life. May this book bring you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, now and always. With deepest gratitude and love, Patrick Andrew Kelly. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 7. Prologue there are moments in life when everything changes. Moments when the veil lifts, we glimpse something beyond the ordinary that shakes us to our core and challenges everything we thought we knew. For me, that moment came when I was at my lowest point, broken and desperate, crying out to a God I wasn't even sure was listening. But he was. And in that moment, he met me in a way that I never could have imagined, revealing truths and mysteries that would forever alter the course of my life and the lives of countless others. This book is the story of that revelation, the journey that led me to it, and the powerful message God has entrusted me to share with the world. 
It is a story of pain and triumph, darkness and light, despair and hope. But more than anything, it is a story of God's relentless love and faithfulness who pursues us, even in our most broken and lost state. As you read these pages, I pray that you will encounter that same love and faithfulness, hear the voice of God speaking directly to your heart, and receive transformation by the power of His truth. I pray that you will understand your true identity as a child of the Most High, your purpose and destiny in His plan, and the urgency of the hour we find ourselves. But I must warn you, this journey is not for the faint of heart. It will require you to confront the darkness within yourself and the world, let go of long-held beliefs and paradigms, and step out in faith and obedience, even when the path ahead seems uncertain. We live in a time of significant shaking and awakening. Challenges face the foundations of our society, and the battle for humanity's soul is raging like never before. God calls His people to rise, take their place as warriors and ambassadors of the kingdom, and be the light piercing the darkness. This book is not just my story, but the story of a generation, a movement, a remnant that God is raising for such a time. It is a clarion call to those with ears to hear and hearts to respond, to those willing to lay down their lives for the sake of the gospel and the advancement of His kingdom. So, as you embark on this journey with me, I ask that you come with an open heart and a willing spirit. Please allow the Holy Spirit to guide and illuminate every step so that you are ready to receive the revelation and activation He has in store for you. For we know the time is short, and the hour is urgent. The King is coming, and He is looking for a ready people, a bride who has made herself pure and spotless, an army who will march under His banner and take back the land for His glory. May you be found among them. May you hear the call and answer with a resounding yes. May you step into your true identity and purpose and become all God has destined you to be. The journey begins now. Let us walk together in faith and expectation, knowing that the best is yet to come. With love and anticipation, Patrick Andrew Kelly. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 8. Introduction Dear reader, you hold a book that is more than just a collection of words on a page. It is a testament to the power of God's love, the reality of His presence, and the transformative journey He invites us to embark upon. It is a story of brokenness and redemption, darkness and light, despair and hope. But more than anything, it is a revelation of the heart of a father who stops at nothing to pursue his children and bring them to the fullness of their destiny. My name is Patrick Andrew Kelly, and I am honored to share this story with you. But in truth, it is not just my story. It is the story of a generation, a movement, a remnant that God is raising for such a time as this. It is a story that transcends individual experiences and speaks to the collective longing of the human heart for meaning, purpose, and connection with the divine. The journey you will embark upon will challenge everything you thought you knew about yourself, God, and the world around you. It will require you to confront the deepest parts of your being, grapple with the reality of the spiritual realm, and make choices that will determine the course of your life and your impact on others. But I promise you this. If you approach this book with an open heart and a willing spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to guide and illuminate every page, you will encounter the living God in a way that will forever change you. You will discover your true identity as a son or daughter of the Most High, your unique purpose and calling in His plan, and the incredible destiny He has prepared for you. Throughout these pages, we will explore the depths of God's love and faithfulness, the power of His Word and His Spirit, and the reality of the spiritual battle that rages around us. We will delve into the mysteries of our true identity as the people of God, the urgency of the hour in which we find ourselves, and the call to rise and take our place as warriors and ambassadors of the kingdom. But this book is not just a theoretical exploration of spiritual truths. It is a practical guide, a roadmap, a blueprint for living out the abundant life that Jesus promised us. It is a call to action, a challenge to step out of our comfort zones and into the adventure of faith that God has invited us to participate in. Within these pages, you will find stories of my struggles and triumphs, revelations, and encounters that have shaped my life and ministry. But more importantly, you will find the timeless wisdom and revelation of God's Word, the guidance and encouragement of the Holy Spirit, and the testimonies of countless others who have walked this path before us. This book can ignite a fire within you, awaken dreams and desires that have lain dormant, and propel you into the fullness of all God has called you to be. 
but it is not a journey for the faint of heart. It will require courage, perseverance, and a willingness to surrender everything to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So, as you begin this journey, I'd invite you to approach it with expectation and anticipation, knowing that the God of the universe is waiting to meet you on every page. I pray that His Spirit will breathe upon these words and bring them to life in your heart. His love will overwhelm you, and His truth will set you free. May you discover, as I have, that there is no more excellent adventure than walking in the fullness of God's purpose for your life. May you experience the joy, peace, and abundance of living in an intimate relationship with Him. May you become a beacon of hope and light in a world desperately needing the gospel's transformative power. The journey begins now. Let us walk together, hand in hand with our Heavenly Father, and watch as He unfolds the incredible story that He has written for each of our lives. With love and expectation, Patrick Andrew Kelly. For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, ESV. Chapter 1. The Message. From a very young age, I experienced unimaginable pain and trauma that most would never recover from. Horrific incidents of sexual abuse, near-death experiences, and torture at the hands of my family members. My childhood was marred by darkness and suffering. Yet underneath the surface of my battered life, an intricate tapestry was being woven together by the hand of a masterful creator. Though indiscernible then, every languishing thread gradually formed an astonishing masterpiece of purpose and destiny. At 51, I finally understood that my life's struggles were not a series of cruel misfortunes, but an intentional refining process. The adversity I endured was necessary preparation, molding the flawed vessel to one day contain a glorious treasure, the words of deliverance, healing, and hope for a hurting world. It all started to become apparent through a profound revelatory dream. I received God's haunting yet beautiful message about my true calling in this supernatural encounter. With raw vulnerability, I describe my life experiences flashing before me, each memory painstakingly replayed to reveal its redemptive purpose in the more extraordinary tapestry. As I relay the revelations and prophecies I received in the dream, I pull back the veil on my emotional anguish, sexual brokenness, and feelings of unworthiness to be entrusted with such a divine mission. Yet God's response rings clear. Come as you are and be delivered. In this opening chapter, I take readers on an intimate, unfiltered journey into the core of my shattered being, giving full expression to the healed and unhealed places. My transparency becomes the lens through which others can encounter their deliverance and healing. From the gripping depths of my story emerges a powerful introduction to my unwanted role as a messenger, a vessel purposely battered and restored to breathe new life into broken souls desperate for truth. Get ready to experience the profound realization that your past did not happen in vain. Every scar has been saved as a monument of your coming revival. God told me that he chose me to be a vessel for delivering an important message to others. This calling came to me through a profound dream I had months ago. In the dream, I had a face-to-face -face conversation with God. God revealed that he had been molding me since I was three years old to prepare me for this pivotal moment. Despite the good, bad, and ugly circumstances I had faced throughout my life, they were all part of God's plan to prepare me as a messenger. God recognized my pure heart and innate drive to pray for strangers, even those I would pass on the street. God wanted to utilize this quality for a greater purpose. Though I had lied, cheated, and strayed in the past, God told me, come as you are and be delivered. The profound message God gave me was twofold. First, to draw people to him, especially during the imminent devastating times ahead. And second, to help people confront their past traumas, let go of their hurt, and receive deliverance. After this transformative dream, I felt reborn. I didn't feel like my old self. The air I breathed was crisp and new. God had revealed my true calling that I had been running from since childhood. At age 51, after a long journey of struggles and suffering, I surrendered to my destiny as a minister and spreader of God's message. Through God's grace, I overcame the power of lust, selfishness, and brokenness. My purpose was to bear my soul, authentically sharing my story, so others could find healing and deliverance. Though the road would not be easy, I was ready to heed God's call to be the message, a light to guide others to confront their pain, find freedom, and ultimately develop a relationship with God. My life's trials had perfectly groomed me for this mission of delivering hope, 
healing and salvation to the masses. I was just an ordinary man who had endured extraordinary pain and hardship. From a very young age, I experienced unimaginable trauma that most would never recover from. Yet through it all, God had an intricate plan to mold and shape me into a vessel for an incredible message of hope, healing, and deliverance. It started with a dream, a lucid transcendent experience that felt more like a face-to-face -face visitation from God himself. I remembered every detail vividly as if it were seared into my mind's eye by divine imprint. In the dream, my entire life flashed before my eyes, replaying memories I had long forgotten, beautiful and brutal reminders of the tortuous path that led me to this fateful moment. As the scenes played out, God still, small voice began explaining that every single experience, every high and every low, was intentionally allowed to prepare me for my true ordained purpose. From the horrific sexual abuse I endured as a three-year-old at the hands of a family member to the near-death experience at age six that sparked my spiritual awakening to the years of torture inflicted by my mother and stepfather as a child. God used it all to fortify my spirit and ready me to withstand the harrowing mission set before me. Everything you have gone through was to prepare you for this day, God impressed upon my heart. I see how you pray for people, even strangers, you pass on the road, something you didn't have to do, but did anyway. At that moment, I felt overwhelmed by the profundity of God's words. A floodgate opened in my soul as I began to grasp the significance of my life's journey and why it had to be so wrought with suffering. I wept uncontrollably, not out of sorrow, but out of a deep sense of being indeed seen and known by my Creator. For the first time, I understood that every anguishing circumstance only reinforced the reality that I was fashioned for a particular assignment, to be God's voice echoing into the depths of other broken lives. The tears that streamed down my face represented a spiritual undressing, a surrender to the plan I had been running from my entire life. As the revelatory dream continued, God declared with unwavering certainty, we are in the last days, and within two and a half years, life as we know will become even more devastating. This sobering prophecy wasn't meant to instill fear, but an acute awareness that time was short. Humanity was hearkening a great unraveling, and souls would be desperately searching for answers, for a lifeline to cling to when the world seemed crumbling around them. This was the urgent need for my message. I want you to be the message to draw people to me, God impressed upon my heart. Get them to know who they truly are, to deal with their past traumas, to let go of their hurt, and receive deliverance. In the depths of my spirit, I felt incredibly humbled and overwhelmingly inadequate for such a summons. The painful memories of my foibles and failures flooded over me like a crashing wave of self-doubt. Lord, how can I be the message when I've lied, cheated, and stolen? I cried out remorsefully. When I've given in to lust and laid with men, how can the sinner like me be trusted with such a mission? But God's response was full of tenderness and mercy. Come as you are and be delivered. At that moment, I finally understood that my battered past was not a detriment to my calling, but the very credibility I would need to reach those equally bruised by life's circumstances. God doesn't use perfect people to be his ambassadors, but real people who have wrestled with temptation, sin, and its consequences. My scars would authenticate my ability to lead others to the cross and find liberty. When I finally emerged from the revelatory dream state, I felt fundamentally altered on a molecular level. There was a profound lightness about me as if God had lifted my spirit of heavyweights, which I hadn't even realized I had been carrying most of my life. The lies, the shame, and the addiction all felt incredibly distant now in light of the new truth burning in my heart. This was my destiny realized, my deliverance actualized. At 51 years old, I finally surrendered to the calling God had been chasing me with since childhood. My life struggles were not a series of random misfortunes, but an intentional refining process to prepare the flawed vessel for the glorious treasure it would one day contain, the words of deliverance and healing for a hurting world. In the days following the life-altering dream, I sensed God's directions becoming more specific and revelations more frequent. He removed a spiritual veil, letting me hear the divine cadence always playing. Still, I was previously deaf to its holy frequency. God revealed that the descendants of Jacob, those who were massacred and driven from their lands before being sold into the bondage of slavery, were about to experience their long-awaited deliverance. After 430 years of subjugation, their time of retribution was at hand to take their rightful place of honor. Everyone who played a part in their demise and destruction, who took advantage of them, will stand in judgment and lose their standing, God declared sternly. There is not a stone they can hide under. 
a building high enough, a bank account big enough, or lie thick enough to cover up their transgressions against my people. They will lose everything they have to those they oppressed. This sobering word rumbled through me with a reverberating spiritual authority. I knew this revelation was not just for me, but forewarning to the unjust and wicked who had perpetrated crimes against the people of God. No evil deed would go unnoticed or unpunished by the righteous judge. A reckoning was coming to settle the debts of inequity. As these profound truths washed over my spirit, I saw how intricately detailed my life's journey had been meefully shaped. Every tragedy had a purpose, every injustice produced perseverance, and every assault on my identity only reinforced the strength of my resolve and dependency on the one who created me. Looking at my life full circle, I realized that God had intentionally positioned and prepared me for this global ministry long before I stepped foot on the earth. God called me to minister to people when I was 9 or 10. But because preaching wasn't my interest, nor did I want to minister to anyone, I started running. God chased me, giving me whippings and molding me along the way. Being a minister or pastor was never my childhood ambition or aspiration. I had seen too much hypocrisy and dysfunction in the church ever to want to pursue that vocation myself. Little did I know that God had a more unorthodox method of cultivating the calling on my life through the fire of real-life experience. Every broken relationship, injustice, mistaken path, and wrong decision became another tool in the master's hand to chisel away my roughness of character. The calluses that formed from enduring so much pain and adversity would become the traction I needed to walk firmly in my divine purpose as a voice of truth for the wounded. See, I grew up in church and witnessed so much dysfunction that it turned me away, but God was always in my heart at every turn. Now I know every part of my journey had a purpose, a plan by Him, even when I was going the wrong way. At 51 years old and 15 years into my spiritual rebirth and restoration process, I could testify of God's relentless, redeeming love that would not let me stay mired in the low places. Through abundant grace and mercy, he raised a living witness to the fact that no person is too far gone or too marred by their past to be recovered by the healing hands of the Almighty. As I prepared to launch this new revelatory journey of using my life as a beacon of hope for others, I knew I would have to bear my soul again and make myself emotionally naked before the world. But this time, the vulnerability would not be a weakness but a powerful entry point for other souls to access their deliverance. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. Psalm, chapter 3, verse 3, ESV. This is At Journey 365. I'm your host, Patrick Andrew Kelly. The topic for the entire season is the spirit of homosexuality, and we will delve into a subject so sensitive, even AI didn't want to have anything to do with it. This season explores the transformative power of the spirit of homosexuality and how it has become a cultural icon, converting even the toughest deniers. From the story of the little baby boy to the unbeknownst flirtation of the heteros and much more, season two starts with the undeniable questions. Were you born homosexual? Have you considered how your preference aligns with the Most High Yahuwah's word? At what point can we have a straight-faced conversation about the rapture? And are you ready? Leading into the final episode, the podcast promises to touch on every point from when I turned homosexual to God's word and the homosexual covenant of marriage to the clarion call for saved lives, and so on. Between all the chatter, tears, deliverance, and so on, we will overcome some personal struggles. We will address broader cultural shifts and explore how our faith can provide a compass in these turbulent times. We'll be joined by thought-provoking guests, share potent testimonies, and offer practical guidance we're living out our calling in an increasingly complex world. Whether you were a listener from last season or joining us for the first time, I invite you to open your heart and mind as we embark on this journey together. Let's challenge ourselves to grow, to love more deeply, 
and to be the change we wish to see in the world. Get ready for raw honesty, inspiring stories, and transformative insights. This is at JRNY 365 Season 2. This is at Journey 365. I'm your host, Patrick Andrew Kelly. Join us Friday at 10 p.m. to continue our series, The Spirit of Homosexuality. Join us tomorrow night for the beginning of an exclusive virtual book tour of When Called by God, a memoir that chronicles my journey from 3 to 51 years old. Discover a story of divine inspiration and personal growth. Key exploration points will be my spiritual awakening, pivotal moments reinforcing my divine connection, challenges I overcame through faith and the impact of answering God's call. When Called by God is a testament to the power of faith, the beauty of personal growth, and the extraordinary journey that unfolds when we heed the divine call. So join us tomorrow night at 10 p.m. And thank you in advance for listening and spreading the word. This experience will be transformative and impactful. Discover other titles from AdSpira One, such as Inspire by USL Magazine, which has two recent issues, When Called by God, Patrick Andrew Kelly, and The Embrace Method, Vladimir Louisson. Available in print and digital, the book, When Called by God, a memoir that chronicles my journey from three to 51 years old, is available in hardcover, paperback, digital, and audiobook worldwide through online retailers, Amazon, Google, Books A Million, and many others. You can pick up these titles in print by visiting uslmag.com. That's U-S-L-M-A-G.com. Get a copy of the digital version visiting magster.com. That's M-A-G-Z-T-E-R.com. Or just Google the title, When Called by God, inspired by USL Magazine. When Called by God, the copy table book with select chapters from the memoir is also available in print. Order online at uslmag.com or magcloud.com. That's uslmag.com or magcloud.com. Have a good night and may Yahua guide and keep you all. Patrick A. Kelly owns the copyright in and to all content in and transcripts of At Journey 365 podcast with all rights reserved as well as his right to publicity. You are welcome to share the transcript up to a maximum of 400 words in media articles such as the AJC and other notable media platforms on your personal website, in a non-commercial article or blog post, and or on a personal social media account for non-commercial purposes, provided that you include an attribution to at Journey 365 podcast and link back to the at Journey 365 podcast URLs. Media outlets with advertising models are permitted to use excerpts from the transcript per the above. No one is authorized to copy any portion of the podcast content or use Patrick A. Kelly's name, image, or likeness for any commercial purpose or use, including without limitation, inclusion in any books, ebooks, book summaries or synopsis, streaming media, TV, film, or any commercial website or social media site, such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, threads, TikTok, X, etc., that offers or promotes you or another products or services. For the sake of clarity, media outlets are permitted to use photos of Patrick A. Kelly from the At Journey 365 podcast or licensed photos of Patrick A. Kelly from commercial image platforms. Content shared from Tim.blog.